I feel like I should come clean now, Brett. Are you serious? I think so. Just because I thought it was cool that Jack mentioned Citizen Brick. Bring me the next. So Brett mentioned I was a pad printer. Oh boy, and, um, here we go. <sighs> and uh, yeah, last August <laughs> I got um, employed by Citizen Brick. So I've been working there since last year as a pad printer. Wow. <laughs> you... <laughs> wow. It, this is not April. Oh, it's wow. not. It's, it's, it's not. This was I, this was I, I very was, close was, hold information because we didn't want his DMs getting blown up with silly requests from people asking for things or asking questions. But if you want to put it on the podcast, yeah, don't, don't don't do that. <laughs> don't. I, I have a kid. I have you know other things. <laughs> it's it's a job for me. Oh. Um, I was printing. I printed shirts for a long time, and it just kind of felt timing wise made sense for me to to jump on that team there. Wow. So. So yeah, I was there for that latest release of that lowrider, um, and then yeah, so it's a it's a real privilege to get to work on those the figures that they do and help Joe execute, you know, his projects that he's got planned out. So and and now wow. you know that you Zach have helped influence how you know Jack makes things. That's I, yeah, I kind of got goosebumps too. I mean, I hear your passion when you're speaking with. Just like releasing a set, and just to say that that was inspired by what Citizen Brick had done. I mean, they've been doing what they've been doing for a long time before I was employed there, but it's just pretty cool. Unbelievable, Zach. Unbelievable. <laughs> I'm, I'm so happy for you. I'm so happy for thank, you. Oh, we were all you. excited when we heard. Yeah. Too. Well, it was. I was a collector first. You know, I've always been a collector, and I've I had known Joe for quite some time, so. Um, yeah, I, I applied for that job and he's gracious enough to, you know, have me on the team. So, well, you That's know, this great. is supposed to be the Jocka interview. Oh yeah. I'm not, yeah I'm so, I'm sorry. I wouldn't mind. This... <laughs> That's all this, I'll say. Uh, this is the kind of news that we all welcome. It's well, at least now I know who to go to when I want a CB figure. Oh yeah. though no, That's, um, about. No, I still get I, I still get um, limited. <laughs> I, I mean, I'm, I, I I try to be kind and not just you know take like to leave everything up for everyone else. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Ed, Brett, edit this out. <laughs> All right, well, 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 I'll, I'll leave to you one for you. Like, let me see if I can help you with your, with your words there. You're, yes. As an employee, obviously there are perks. However, comma. It doesn't mean you have perks that you can employ to everybody else. Totally. Thanks, Brad. Yeah, I, I can already <laughs> see. <laughs> so the part where Jack says, I know where to go, <laughs> that's where we're stopping. <laughs> okay. Uh, but uh, <laughs> but I, I will say, so now, Jack, if you do have further questions about Citizen Brick methodology or nuances regarding how they do things at least now you have a contact you can talk to yeah i and i will say that citizen brick is joe is he's he's doing uh, every you know everything where i'm just helping him execute so so it's not unlike other brands you know just a small team of folks just trying to make some cool figs mm -hmm. yeah and he's and it's the main source of his like his income it's not a side project or anything so it's a little bit, it's a different beast that. Well, he also has in-house printing. Yeah. Well, he has Which is what I do. <laughs> <laughs> but okay. Well, so do you feel that, you know, do you feel that this, um, the Star Wars set's been justified? Like do you feel like it's sold well enough that you can um, entertain the idea of making more sets in the future? Or use you know even if it's just for special events or whatever. 
Yeah, actually, I, I'm not sure on how well it's selling right now because I haven't asked all, all of the resellers yet. I have a an approximate number, but not yet. And we'll see about that. But no matter how well it sells, it was such an emotional emotional project for for all of us for for the team and for the customers. I think we'll definitely have more projects like this, not only for Star Wars franchise, but also like maybe Marvel or DC if the time comes. Cool. You can do like a awesome. throne, you can do like a throne of Asgard or something. Definitely. I'm just trying to think of something that iconic and i really can't for marvel surprisingly enough you know lego lego just released their statue of liberty set so you're you're beat there um well, so they don't have the cool. whole like statue <laughs> <laughs> you heard it here first ja- jack's making a, a three foot tall statue of liberty set <laughs> Currently, you have about three different franchise lines that you've been working on. You've got Justice League, Age of Ultron, and now you recently announced you're doing Guardians of the Galaxy. How do you adjust your production schedule to keep these going at the same time so that customers don't feel abandoned in a franchise that they're invested in? So basically, like, those still waiting for you to complete Justice League, and then they see you pumping out, you know, Killmonger, they might have questions. How do you, how do you, justify um those wait times right um our initial hope when starting those lineups was to release them one at a time and one for each month but then things happen and um well the design first of all the design takes time and they might not be ready and we have to keep adjusting the design till it looks perfect on our end so, you know, we have movies coming out once in a while. And as a Marvel fan, naturally, we would be excited for characters from that movie. And I think it's reasonable for us to maybe, you know, get those characters uh, in front of the line. And then those um, Justice League or Age of Ultron characters would be naturally pushed back. But that doesn't mean we're not going to make them anymore we are and matter of fact we will be releasing another justice league figure justice league figure very soon probably after our wonder woman is shipped out um so no i'd seen some stories about your wonder woman and i noticed that the the shield and the sword were very complex designs and i'm i'm just guessing here but i imagine there are also chances or delays based on how complex those accessories are would that be a correct assumption yeah because now you got new new things coming out you've got this flash movie coming out blue beetle the marvels Loki season two so the question is going to be what's what next series do you think you might adopt we're leaning towards the flash movie uh, I could see why you'd be involved in the Flash because your first figure or your first Instagram post post was a Flash ring accessory, and then your next fig, your first actual fig, was the Flash. I don't think we ever talked about why you chose that as your first fig, but if you want to tell the story, you can do that now. Right. So I've got this long story because I actually, uh, in prep for preparation for this podcast, I actually went back to the oldest message I could find about me getting into the custom um, world. And I have this whole story. I have this whole okay. story. Are you ready? Oh, we're ready. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, popcorn. so my journey as a Lego custom um, figure collector started back in 2017. And um, I was in Hong Kong at that time. And then there's a place called Ends Point. I don't know if you guys know that place, mm-hmm. but it's essentially a place that uh, mainly sells a Lego related products. And I was there on on a trip, and then I was looking to buy the sets that just came out. I was super excited uh, just to get the sets. And then when I went there, it was so exciting. It was so exciting. And then I saw those figures. I didn't know 
what a custom figure was. I just, I just looked at that figure and it was nothing like what Lego would have made. And it was a chromed Iron Man figure from, I believe, if I remember correctly, from a Finland brand. Yeah, and I was just staring at that figure for so long. And then this one person came to me and he was asking me, are you interested in this figure? And I was like, yeah, like, what is this? It's it's not Lego. And he was like, yeah, it's custom me figure. And that person was Rex. That's when I first met Rex. And then he introduced me to the Lego custom, custom Lego world. And that's when I started my wild journey as a custom collector, custom figure, minifigure collector. I was so into it. I got everything that came out. Like Dragon Brick used to release like three to four figures once two weeks, right? And then I used to get all of them and every. Every, with their every release and same as like the the crystal not the crystal crystal but the other crystal and mini figure factory and all that brand and at, at one point i was like why am i getting all these like why like i didn't even know who some who some of the characters were but i still got them and i got super tired of collecting everything like literally everything i never really showed my collection but at one point, I was the brat of collecting Flash figures. Like, I had every single Flash figure. And I had even multiples of a design just to display them, like 30 of them. And I got really tired, like, just chasing chasing the figures that I didn't even know who it was. And I just stopped. But then I still like Lego and I still like collecting figures. I was just tired of collecting all of them. And inspired by top brands like um, Phoenix Customs, um, KO, Brothers, Figs, and all that brand, I, I wanted to start my own brand. And so together with three other friends of mine, with the intention of making Flash figures particularly, we started Jaka Brick which ironically we have only like what three or four flash figures till now, but that's how we started Jaka brick. That's why we started Jaka brick because of the flash figures that I really like. No, yeah, that's, that's a fascinating story. Um, yeah, that's, and relatable. That's awesome. I mean, I don't think there's not one person listening to this podcast that collects that can't relate to a part of that. Um, specifically the, the burnout that you can feel and the exhaustion mm -hmm. you can feel in trying to collect everything that um, you actually love it and you're fast passionate about it, but it feels like a chore and it doesn't seem right. And uh, that's something collectors feel every day. I would say that um, <laughs> not all of us can just say, you know, it's screwed. I'll just make my own, <laughs> but uh, that, that's a really cool story. Thank you for sharing. Yeah. Well, it sounded a lot better in my mind, but no, it sounded no, it was, fine. It sounded it extremely great. relatable. <laughs> yeah, I was like, "What you had? You had you had multiples of figures that you were wondering what to really do with." Show my collection. You should. Yeah, I should, yeah. Really should. like share my collection. You know, break down yeah. that break that. down that uh, that mirage that you're just some corporate brand CEO sitting in a high rise building. You're just another <laughs> guy that collects many figures that happens to make them too. I, I tell you, you when will, I, I will when this episode yeah. airs. All righty. When, when I get like your figures in, Jaka figures in, and or certain brands and stuff, I do feel like the passion behind it. Is it just something that was produced or is it something that someone took the time and care with to make sure it was at its best possible iteration before it was released? And I do feel like with Jaka brand, it always comes off like something that was super passionate and well well made so oh absolutely the, the, everything's always been very well the quality control has always been very good i think in the past you've only had one or two qc issues that i had known of that you corrected right away um or made the effort to help correct but you know speaking of quality product uh it's not just the figs you produce that are pretty high grade quality it's also the accessories that you produce you know, whether it be, you know, Thor hammers or the claws you created for X23 and Logan, which are really, really cool. 
But do you ever try to like repeat accessories that you know are really good, or do you just try to do a new version each time to try and improve upon it? Um, that'd be my question to you because uh, I know a lot of folks tend to, again, we talk about collectors like consistency. Um, it would make sense for like, uh, I'm just going to keep using Thor as an example. This hammer looks similar almost in every single fig that's released. Yeah, I get that. But as a matter of fact, um, the Thor hammers, we've actually done a few adjustments that might not um, be very, very noticeable, but we did. And we we not always, we do not always um, tend to use the same part for the same character. We always um, look for places where we can improve. For example, the Thor hammer, we adjusted the thickness of the outer rim of the the edges um because for the first sore we released we noticed that it was too thin to be produced and it would clip off very easily so we improved on that and i think for the next few stores or well the next few stores we improved on that and it was different and as well as the Stormbreaker, it might seem that we are using the same one, but we actually improved on the mold that it's more stabilized and it's more um, playable. Yeah. Yeah, that's a two-part mold, so, right? The Stormbreaker? Yeah, the Stormbreaker. It's a three-part mold. Oh. Man, that, that's yeah. one thing I would love to exist in the customs world. If there were some sort of standards and practices organization that said, your stormbreaker will be this size because I've got I've got about five different stormbreakers from different figs from different brands, all different sizes. <laughs> and if you want consistency, it's not happening. But would you ever consider like I know in the past Brothers has released like uh, Thor hammers. Uh, GB has done something similar with stormbreakers. I think Feelings has done something in the pa- uh, recently with like Spider Man cowls. Um, did you ever thought about maybe releasing like an individual accessory for purchase like a thor stormbreaker two pack yeah we've been asked a lot because like when we were releasing our captain america people were asking if the shield is um purchasable individually or when we released the deadly duel the the wolverine figures if the the hands were sold separately and the stormbreaker as well so well I don't know. We're still debating because, well, if it, it's a completely, it's it's completely different when you're just selling the accessories. It might not seem different, but it's completely different because we would have to spend time making the parts, but the printing is not happening when only releasing the parts. So I'm not sure how we are able to work with our production with that, but we'll see. You'd we'll almost see. need like we'd a second team a lot of times. just to focus on that. Yeah. Yeah. Cause our, our production takes on projects as, as a complete project, not only like accessory by accessory. So I'm not sure how we're going to figure that out, but it's definitely something we're going to consider as a lot of people have asked. Cool. We'll see. We'll see. Well, speaking of accessories, um, out of nowhere, you just started including stickers in your cases after you've actually after you just changed your cases from the standard uh, cardboard box to the um, plastic cases, and you started doing keychains as well. How how did that all come about? So, I I wanted to put the promo illustrations like the the portraits before releasing the render. I want I wanted to put them more into use and not just for for once or for promo and then done. So um there was one time when I was buying other products from um uh, other luxury brands outside of Lego and they were giving out stickers. So that's when I got inspired and I was like, well, why don't we do stickers? It's not that expensive we can handle that and people will love them and we just did that 
And then we're getting a lot of good feedback, positive feedback about the stickers. Then we wanted to take another step further. So we made the keychains. I wanted to make the those um, fridge magnets, if that's what you call them. Mm -hmm. I wanted to, but I, I, I couldn't find the right um, factory to do them, but we'll see. That'd be cool. Yeah, I have a whole collection of not only Jocka stickers, but stickers from other brands like Citizen Brick and um, Mini Bigs and mm -hmm. uh, Truid and whatnot. And I'm just, I, they were all, they're all in a giant bag because I'm not sure how I want to apply them yet. I think I'm just going to buy a giant whiteboard and just put them all over it. Because I don't want to put it in my Lego parts case because that's going to get messed up and then they'll get dirty. And, yeah, yeah, don't, yeah, that's what I did. It, just, it gets to be a lot, but it's cool to see them on there. I have a actually, lot of the um, stickers. one of the keychains I got from you was the Wednesday figure. And one of my good friends at work, um, she was a really big uh, fan of that character before the show. Um, like actually like two years prior, a Halloween, she dressed up and won a holiday contest as, as Wednesday Adams. So I gave her that keychain and she was very excited to receive it. And, uh, didn't give her the minifig. That's mine. But, <laughs> but uh, I did give her the keychain and she was, she was really excited to see it. And um, it took me a second to realize that there was a small protective film on each side. Cause I was like, I saw there were some bubbles and I thought it was in the plastic, but it was just the film you have to peel off. Yeah. But they're really, they're really nice quality. Literally looking at the Red black, Red black widow one, right? Right you now, got a black widow one. I do. I do. Oh, I'm literally I'm, now. I'm looking at it. Is there? A, there's a film on it. I think so. there's a tiny little thing you have to peel off. Actually, on my desk, I know, I've I'm got doing it right now. I'm doing it. <laughs> there's a whole ASMR. Thing everyone who's that. listening, everyone right. who's listening to this po podcast, go peel off the phone. <laughs> go peel off the plastic off your jacket right. keychains. Yeah, you, did, you didn't finish when you just received them. Yeah, I um, I actually got um. I got the X23 one here on my desk. Ooh. We're going to start trading and collecting these. These might be, yeah, this might become a commodity now. Um, yeah, you were like, ooh, got the Black Widow one? <laughs> <laughs> um, so, I was talking to other customers, and then they were like, I got multiples of this character. Like, what if I get seven of the same character? Do I get a special mystery prize? I was like, <laughs> yeah, sure. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Wait to... <laughs> Invisible fit, that's what you get. <laughs> yeah. It's really funny. Um, all right. So we've talked about how you've come to be. We've talked about um production and design and accessories, but um I like to talk about distribution because you've broken new ground as one of the first Asia-based premium custom brands to establish a US reseller. And that's through Al over at Minibigs. Um now, this move has alleviated a lot of stress from U.S. space collectors who don't want to pay a lot for shipping, even as um, resellers such as Tier 1 have started introducing lower um, pricing uh, shipping options. But uh, I got to know, how did this all come to be? And um, we'll, we'll just take it from there. How did, how did this how did this happen? Because <laughs> like your speed, now everyone's comparing you uh, to to the other brands regarding the ability to sell uh, through a U.S. reseller. Right. So we were actually just doing, doing, doing what we're, we were doing. And then one day Elle came to us and then um, we were just talking, casually chat, uh, chatting. And then he mentioned that he wanted to um, help us distribute our products in the U S and I, I I said yes because at that at that time we didn't have a US based reseller and from customers I noticed that they are stressing out over ordering products from overseas. And we I didn't want to um conflict our resellers. For example, we had uh, we have a UK designated reseller. Right. But Andrew. we didn't for the US, so that was good. Yeah. So that was good. So I, I thought, why not? And he was a he was a nice guy. He was a well-established brand already. And he was 
he was welcomed to be um, our reseller. And that really turned out super great. That was one of the best decisions um, I've made. Oh, Al's great. He's a fantastic guy to work with. Yeah, um, he's a nice guy. Absolutely nice guy. And um, you know, he also puts out, for those who don't know, Al over at minibigs.com. Uh, he's minibigs on Instagram. He also produces original creations that are fantastic. You may have noticed um, a lot of Michael Myers minifig posts in the recent weeks. He helped produce those uh, in collaboration with one of our co-hosts, Nick, for Brick Cinema. Those were great. Yeah, but it's um, a great fig. I love that yeah. fig. Did you find that um, having a U.S. reseller shifted your business, or did it expand it, or a little bit of both? Well, me and Al were was actually talking about it not so long ago, and um, making him establishing him as one of our resellers has definitely helped us grow and expand, and especially with his free U.S. shipping and his kindness and his reputation, we were able to reach more people that used to be scared to order from overseas. So, yeah, he, he, he has definitely helped us. Actually, yeah, that's actually a good point. I didn't think about that. Um, a lot of folks here buy from overseas. They think AliExpress, which can be very shady for, for a Western buyer. Um, uh, or they go to a website where they have to change the language from Chinese to English. Uh, I can see why those inexperienced with dealing with overseas purchases can be hesitant to to invest. Did you ever have any concerns about how well your other longtime reseller partners might react to that? Because, I mean, your figs are going to sell out regardless, right? Most custom figs, I'd say about 85 to 90% of all custom figs generally sell out no matter who's selling them. But being that you're not doing a fixed quantity and you're doing open pre-orders, I'm just wondering, did the resellers, did you did you have did you have any concerns about say, I mean, I'm I don't want I mean, we all know we're talking about Tracy, Rex, uh, you know, LCM, uh, tier one. Did you have any concerns about how or even independent resellers like Mini Legogo, uh, did you ever have any concerns about how this might affect their business or did they ever voice their concerns? Well, we try not to conflict our resellers. So we didn't have a U.S. based reseller. So I thought uh, having mini bigs taking over that region was um, something that might not conflict with um, our existing resellers. And I think I, I noticed a pattern um throughout um these years that when when a customer is buying a figure not only does the figure itself matters but also who is selling it like they're not some of them they're not buying a figure because the figure itself is what interests them but is the reseller that they buy um the most from so what I mean by that is that who whoever buys from, um, for example, um, Andrew is still going to buy from him no matter what. And whoever buy from Tracy Brick is still going to stick with her no matter what. So with Mini Biggs being um, our new reseller, he, he is only going to um, introduce new customers to our products. And for those who have been buying our products, they're going to stick with the resellers that they've been they've been buying from for years. That's something that I figured. Maybe, maybe yes, maybe not. But no, that makes perfect sense. There is there is a sense of loyalty to resellers, um, just like there's a sense of loyalty to brands. We, we like our systems again. We again like. Customers like consistency, uh, you know, and I've got my resellers I like to use as well um, for these items, uh, the arrangements that I have. So, yeah, uh, I tried. To, I tried to stick with Mini Legogo on just because he's helped me out so much in the past. So uh, lately, other brands have been doing collabs with fig designers. In the past, we've talked about like say like LCM and Bagels. 
uh, and things to art. These artists don't have the means to print on their own. And recently you just did a Wednesday fig. That was a collab with Four Stud and it now that came out just, you know, great. Um, and now you're also you've mentioned Cold Blood's a good old friend of yours that you're getting to work with for your Star Wars figs. Do you have any other plans to continue these types of collabs in the future? And if so, are there any other artists that you plan to, that you'd like to work with that you may have noticed? Definitely, definitely. We we always welcome designers that are talented to share their ideas with us. And we we love to see different versions of characters they make that they post on Instagram. For example, um I'm a really I'm I'm a fan of um fix to arts and um lucas fan arts people like them do their own versions of the the marvel and dc and star wars characters and they are just so lovely they have their own unique style and they have their own innovative uh um part ideas and i love those and we actually talked on and off about possible collabs which we'll see. We'll see when the times come. When the time comes, that's awesome. I mean, actually, Figs Two Art. I was really excited when they did um, designs for Everything Everywhere All at Once. You know that film? And yeah, uh, I was I was hoping somebody would pick it up, but it didn't happen. But yeah, that'd be cool. We'll I'd like to see it. some customs on that. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Again, a c- certain franchises and brands you know have that window where you're just kind of like i don't know how relevant or popular it is in the the zeitgeist of of things so uh i don't know if anyone will pick it up but i think they're cool i mean if anything they're just interesting designs maybe maybe something cb can do one day zach yeah okay i'll uh, (laughs) I'll, I'll throw it up to the top (laughs) (laughs) um yeah so uh, moving on to community, uh, just a few years ago, um, it wasn't common for brands to interact with the customers outside of you know VIP statuses or restricted chat rooms like on WeChat or WhatsApp. But a lot of brands have really started engaging with customers with polls, asking questions, providing behind the scenes footage with the factories or you know in test phases. And and Jack, you've been right up there at the front with the best of them in engaging with the community. Uh, this being on this podcast, a prime example, how has interacting with the customers helped shape your vision or your uh, production choices? It has really helped us to get the idea of what our customers really want, because I think there's, there's not a better way to understand your customers truly um, than actually talking with them. And when when interacting with them, they would suggest characters to make, and they would give feedbacks to our designs. They would request updates on their orders, or even just casually chatting. It all helps to uh, it all help uh, helps us to form an understanding of what they're expecting from us, so that we can work towards their expectations. And I feel like for the past months, we've really been talking with a lot of our customers and knowing what they want so we can make our products um that can be appreciated i've been talking to like you know brat lately and some other collectors i don't know you could say it jamel jamel's blown up your inbox (laughs) (laughs) he knows i was gonna call him out well Love Jimmy. Yeah, I've been talking. Um, I love talking to you guys. You know, it's it's fun getting to know all like your thoughts, your ideas, and feedback. Yeah, I really enjoy doing that, and I will keep doing that. It really helps on shaping our brand. Do you feel that there are any uh, downsides to these interactions? Well, yeah, I would say yeah, but it's it's nothing compared to the benefits that it brings us, but um, some of the downsides are probably, well, when people were giving us feedbacks on our designs, we are not always able to fulfill their suggestions and they might get disappointed at the end. 
which well, it's quite unfortunate. We don't want that to happen, but it's some of their personal preferences that we might not be able to fulfill. So that's one. The, the second one, I'm not completely against it or anything, but I understand that they are excited to get their figures, but asking updates um, just one week after the release might be too early because <laughs> at that time, at that time, we were probably still um, open for pre-orders and we don't even know the quantity yet. Um, nothing is set, uh, set to stone. We might even be tweaking the designs. So there's not much to update honestly so maybe next time a few other weeks later would probably be better and other than that it's pretty cool to interact with customers i'm enjoying it most of the time i finally um, got the film off the black widow <laughs> I, I, my, my fingernails are just just abysmal so I just... <laughs> yeah, it's really it's nice um so one one of the things I was thinking about regarding interactions is sometimes the loudest voices are the people I noticed that don't even buy custom figs. They just like to be the loudest person in the room or they like to have an opinion about everything online. Uh, how do you evaluate the feedback you get where, and I'm not saying that, I'm not saying that not everyone's opinion is unimportant or anything like that. But if you have a person that's like, you need to make this, you need to make this, you need to make this. And then you like, you go to their Instagram profile and they have like nothing but like regular Lego figures. Like they don't even collect customs. How do you, how do you deal with that? Well, um, I think you're right. But um, when some, some people don't buy our product, but that, that doesn't necessarily mean that their opinions doesn't, uh, doesn't matter. Cause Maybe they're having the same thoughts as people who actually ordered a figure. We consider their suggestions no matter what. And um, we evaluate the feedbacks based on whether if it'll make the figure look good. Because while well, there might be some details that we have missed during the designing stage that people might notice and tell us, which will perfect the design. And it would make them look, uh, it would make it look better. Like, um, such as how the color of a certain armor should be darker or like how the gun should be shorter, etc. But there are also feedbacks that are more of a personal preference um, that we might not be able to fulfill, such as like changing the molded cape to a fabric one, which I get a lot, or vice versa. That's how we evaluate the feedbacks we get. And we evaluate them as a team. I share those feedbacks. I organize them. I send it to the team. And then we vote sometimes. But oftentimes, uh, we're on the same page. And the vote is not necessary. We just agree on that one solution. So, yeah. That's cool. Did you... Uh... Did you ever get any customer input that inspired you to make a change that was for the better? Like, wow, we did not notice that. That was such a great idea. Well, not necessarily a sing a single feedback or like input, but the overall the importance of communication and custom service throughout um, these times had made us realize how um, important it is for us to prioritize communicating with our customers and getting the right service to them and the feedback we got from doing so has made us realize how important it is for us to keep doing it in order to um become a better brand um all right so this is a question i like to ask um folks that are in the business um obviously your your own figs are your favorite figs but is there a favorite fig from you from another custom maker that you just or total awe of it's like it's just one of your favorites and you think they just did a great job on it gosh i think this is by far the most difficult question you have asked today because 
<laughs> I'm looking at my collection wait, wait. right now. Is this now. because you don't want to say someone else did a good job or because you just have a lot of good things you like? No, no, no. It's because <laughs> there's a lot of figures that I like. <laughs> of course, there are figures that um, uh, did, did a better job than we did. I have to admit, there are a lot and we have to learn from them, definitely. And there are just too many of them. I, well, to start off, there is that um, Star Trek series made by Crystal. I love that. No one, no one has tackled that series, and they made it, and it's perfect. Very clean, very clean. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Crystal at its finest, and the PCB and um, Cold Blood Ahsoka. I haven't received it yet, but looking at the pictures, I'm I'm so fascinated by it prints the custom mold it's perfect and well oh, so many i have the black star kingdom come batman nice such a well-made figure mm-hmm. i don't think anyone was expecting There's you to say so that. so many yeah i can keep the list going yeah There's i like the so i like the black star bats a lot if i if i had the bandwidth and the money to just buy anything and everything i wanted that's something that's that's one line i would have invested more in yeah and the LCM Vision Ultron, that was well made. Bravo! Oh, absolutely. Bravo absolutely. to them. Speaking of vision, it's a great thing. Speaking of vision, <laughs> vision. Speaking of Age of Ultron, Vision Jack. Uh, yes, <laughs> I I hear you. I I feel you. <laughs> I feel you. Yes, it okay. it is in the lineup. I know. I know. I just give you a hard time because I keep asking about it. <laughs> uh, okay, so you made it clear you're you're more than um, more than open to receiving DMs from folks. I can't imagine how flooded your inbox must be. So the fact that you're handling it all by yourself is pretty impressive. But if someone were to DM you right now and they were like, "Hey, I'm trying to launch my own brand, I'm trying to get into this business," what do you think is the number one piece of advice you would give them? Well, I would say that. Before actually creating your brand, you have to know what you are doing. You have to know whether if you're in this business for your passion or just for the sake of the cash. And you have to know what kind of brand you want to establish, like the style you want, the kind of printing you want, the characters that you're going to make. Because if you don't know what brand you want to establish you're just gonna get even more lost during the process because all the comments that you'll get and the result that you will you will receive at the beginning might not be what you have hoped and if you you from the start you know what you're doing you wouldn't be um, affected by those and just keep going till you receive something that you deserve but if you don't know, you will get lost. You will get lost. I had a hard time when I first started the brand. I had a hard time finding, knowing, acknowledging what I wanted and what I was doing. But luckily, I had um, those friends that helped me to make clear what I wanted. So definitely know what you want. Fair enough. Okay, so so in the last year alone, right, you've changed your logo, your packaging, you've introduced your light uh, light design fig line, you started collabing with Lego artists and other 3D printers, you've established a US reseller, you've established a custom Lego set, you started bringing Star Wars into your mix, and then start incorporating stickers and keychains into your packages. That is one hell of a year of innovation. What's next? Mm, it's hard to say, but we are definitely expanding and we're working more closely with our factory. So our production uh, cycle might get even um, faster. And well, just we're just going to keep doing what we're, we've been doing and we'll see. We want to hear your thoughts. What do you want to see from Jaka Brick? 
Jar Jar Binks. Comment down below. <laughs> Jar Jar, Jar Binks. The, the true dark. No side. one's done it. Uh, no one's done it. Oh my god! You know what? I guarantee, I bet you, if you made a Sith Lord Jar Jar Binks fig, it would sell like crazy. It's, it's, it's never been done before, and it's a meme. It'll go. It'll go like that. Yeah. If if I do it, I'm not gonna do it alone. I'm gonna invite Adam and other brands to do it with me. So let me. We're all let me, in this together. So <laughs> I, I have to ask this because it's just it's just mandatory. Uh, when are you gonna make Sket a Squirrel Girl? Oh, I knew this was coming. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um. Well, didn't Adam say that he was gonna make one? Oh, it doesn't matter. In his. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. matter. Everyone's got to make more. one. He needs them all. Okay. You know what? I'm going to talk um, to Adam and see if we're able to collaborate on a square girl. There wow. You go. That would be, that'd be pretty impressive. Power awesome. of the pod. Power of the pod. But, um, all right. Well, Scary. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. I mean, with that being said, uh, that kind of wraps up everything we wanted to talk about today. Um, Zach, did you have any additional questions? No, um, this has been great, incredibly enlightening, and it's great to hear, put a voice to a name and know that if I'm chatting you on Instagram, that it very well could be you, could be Jack. (laughs) That's cool. Uh, And don't ask uh, me for CV stuff. Not you. Yeah, you can if you want to, but uh, just cut this, Brett. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm gonna cut it. There's, there's no, there's no polite way of saying it. I don't know. Um, yeah. so Zach, if you have any questions, uh, Jack, uh, this is your last chance. Um, before you sign off, if there's anything you'd like to reveal to the audience, anything special, we've already, we've already announced that Zach works for Citizen Brick, and I slid in there that you're working on Queen Ramonda for Wakanda forever, but is there anything else you'd like to talk about? I feel like nothing would feel important after someone's working at Citizen Break. <laughs> you know? <laughs> like, what What could be better? Nothing. It's a privilege. It's really, really fun. Just, and yeah, I felt like in that last episode, I was just like on pins and needles. Like, they're like, what makes you, What you have a unique perspective. I'm like, but, you know, I really wanted to come as a collector first because that's how I started in this hobby and um, how I met Brett and Nick and all the other co-hosts and wonderful people. So just but so happy. I just so happened to it's work. It's not this. about you, Zach. It's not about you. <laughs> Sorry. Got main character well, syndrome over here. Tony Stark. Um, <laughs> Well, jokes aside, we do have um, many things planned for the future. For example, we have um, a nightmare lineup for the Justice League coming up. Oh, wow. And Sweet. Yes, but we don't want to reveal them yet as we are not even halfway done with our original Justice League lineup. So we're going to hold that for uh, a bit longer. And we also have an X-Men series in the works. It's a collab with one of our resellers. Stay tuned for that. Ooh. It's pretty exciting. And mm-hmm. I'm probably giving out, giving away too much, but I really want to um, tease this. The Daredevil <clears throat> figures, I don't know if I'm allowed to say this, but sorry, Adam. The Daredevil figures with um, Phoenix Customs is coming very soon. Looking forward to it. Cool. All right. Well, that's awesome. Um, and uh, I really appreciate you dropping those those bombs on us. And uh, I look forward to seeing those in the future. I understand there's no timetable attached to those and priorities can shift. So don't start spamming Jack with questions about when these things are going to start popping up. They'll get there when they get there. But um, that's going to wrap it up for this episode. Um, uh, Once again, thank you, Zach, for swinging by. I appreciate you finally having your own episode. Um, Yeah, this was a lot of fun. Thanks, Brett. And Jack, I I cannot thank you enough for all your support. Um, 
by the time between the, the, the donations for the, the giveaway for the um, Geek Exchange, um, by the time this episode airs, you guys will have seen the torsos that, that they printed for me for the Big Bad Fig cast and Geek Over 40, which are really cool. And that was a total surprise uh, to me. So, I mean, just everything you do has just been nothing but fantastic. And I can't thank you enough. Uh, so likewise, but, likewise. And the fact that you've even come on this podcast, um, is, it's, it's such a pleasure. Insane. Such yeah. a pleasure. It was really fun. The bar has been raised, um, for sure. So, okay. Well, that being said, um, in the show notes, I'll have links to, you know, everyone's Instagrams as usual, uh, as links to, if you wish to show your support for the podcast, um, I do this all on my own, out of my own pocket. Uh, never obligated, always appreciated. Until then, uh, take care of yourself, take care of each other, and uh, I'll see you next time. Take care. Everyone say bye. 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 <laughs> and that's it. Shiny new thing. Bring me Even... the next. Shiny new wow. thing. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep this in. <laughs> it's, it's, like, it's a great theme song, Brett. You picked a good one. I want you on my rack I want to make you ring I want you to unwrap I want to pull your string Bring me the I got that. That wasn't actually free. That was, um... No, it was off Shutterstock. I, I just I have an account with Shutterstock, and I was looking for a creative license um, one I have to pay royalties to, and that was it. Wow. And um, yeah, I originally okay. really wanted to do a more 90s hip hop, you know, a lot of record scratching and stuff. Because um, that's just more my personality. But I, I think it's an upbeat, it's an upbeat tune. It pumps you up. And, uh, you know, it kind of the, the verbs, I mean, the verbs, the, uh, the lyrics go right with the idea of collecting. So it's like it was mm-hmm. perfect. Yeah. No, this is this is great. I love it. So. Um, yeah, right. I, 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 sorry. Dude, we to go, think you were getting punked for a minute, Jack. Yeah, Jack we on go, Amazon. We could go for almost three hours. Yeah. Um, remember, like at least a half hour of that was us just bullshitting around, or you know, this will this will definitely be two parts. Um, but uh, no, dude, this was awesome. Um, it's getting late over there, so I'm not, I don't want to keep you up any more than I have to. But um, this has been great. I'm going to start the edits on this maybe today. Um, I got to finish up. I think I'm done with my, my new Instagram post. So I'm going to do that. But the next one I got to do, I got to do a group shot of all the Spideys somehow. The one that, um, the one that Merc minifigure Merc just did with all his star Wars. I would do something Mm -hmm. like that. Ooh, nice. Nice. Yeah. Well, I asked him how he did it. He built a giant stadium out of bricks, you know, Wow. Wow. And uh that's something that I've I've started mocking up uh on my own is trying to create some sort of stand for those types of group shots where I can just put them in there easily and um not have to worry about that kind of stuff anymore. But it's hard because Spideys all have like, you know, these extra Waldo arms and all sort of crazy shit. Right. And it, it kind of messes with the uh the layout. Well, I don't know. I'm gonna figure it out. So anyways, all right, so I'm going to let you go. Yep. Thank you so much for yes. having me. Please invite me again. Oh, your podcast. sure, sure. Um, this is kind of the biographical one. I'll have to think about uh, what to talk about. I'll have to look at my episode list and see if there's Brett, something I can bring you on for. Brett, if you have enough brands who want to jump in, like Jack, you should do like an inside the actress studio or like, you know, where they like get a bunch of brands talking oh. on a podcast. Or I don't know what that's called. That would in, be great. You know, like that just, was something suggested to me before. Uh, I think Adam mentioned that. So yeah, people are open to it, you know. Maybe. But um, I got. I'm gonna. La- I'm gonna say one last <laughs> thing that's gonna that's gonna haunt your nightmares. So Peter Quill, frozen face. <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Brett. No, right. I think it's cool. You know, actually, you know what's funny is you actually managed to get the whole swollen look really well done. I can see he even shifted some of the beard print, it looks like almost to like I don't know how they did it, but 
yeah the first thing i thought was like wait a minute i mean right but the, no it was pretty pretty cool to me at first but then i couldn't unsee it after uh, <laughs> but no it's really is a great fig i'm really looking forward to the whole line and um Gamora is coming we... this week if everything goes oh wow plan. so cool. i actually had two questions uh so i was thinking about the uh, guardians line and i know you showed me um you showed me an early render of the um of cosmo which is cool it's very lego like um i wish lego had a sitting dog mold but you know i get it um is there uh with mantis i was curious for your designer are they going to do like bigger than normal eyes or they can stick with regular lego eyes we haven't got a mantis yet I, i'm just uh, curious i think it would serve better with bigger than the normal eyes personally I'd be interested in right. seeing. We'll him. see. I'll I'll mention this. I'll mention this to our designer, and it's, we'll see about that. We haven't gotten to Mantis yet. That's one of their core, you know, one of you the core point, yeah. points of her design. And then, uh, lastly, I was curious about Groot. Um, and you don't have to answer this now, uh, but so for instance, LCM had done Groot in the past, and it was just like a Lego like minifigure with a Groot head. Um, and I can see Jin teased. He's doing more of his little plus up line with the stackable parts um, to give more of a definitive Groot shape. Did you have any put any thought into what your guys are going to probably do? Yeah, we uh, we've been working on it, and we in, we were inspired by the Nexo. What's 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 that theme called? Nexo, Nexo Knight. Knight. Yeah, Nexo Knight. Yes, ah. Nexo Knights. That big fig. But it was his armor, though. It was too sharp on the edges. So we were going to re reference that and see how it goes. We've started cool. on him. And I might even share some progress with you guys. And uh, with that being said, we're going to go ahead and wrap this up. Yep. Thanks for having me again. Thank hey, you so man. much. Friend, Zach. This has been yeah, awesome. Nice to meet you. This has been awesome. And uh, I look forward to hearing how your team laughs at your voice. <laughs> <laughs> they will they will they will all right man take care all right see bye. you all right bye bye